Okay, we are now live. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to the second week of Devtoberfest. I'm really happy to have you joining us okay, today. We are now live. Okay, we are. Hello. Yeah, hello, everyone. Hi, Internet. Let's see. Can anyone hear me? So before we start this session, um, <laughs> there we go. Before we start the session, we are now live. We will, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome to the second week of the Octoberfest. Sorry about that. Yeah, so before we start, um, we want to be able to let you guys know what Deptoberfest is. This is the second week of Deptoberfest, and we're happy to have Lars joining us today. Um, so some of you are probably experiencing your first Deptoberfest, so we'll care to kind of let you know a little bit about what Deptoberfest is and what exorcism is as well. So Deptoberfest is a, a month-long preparation for um, TechEd um, for developers. Um, we have a bunch of sessions that you guys can join uh, on Monday. For this um, year, we have ones for ABAP on Mondays, and we have a few others for the rest of the week. Um, I will just show you a few of the ones that we have planned for this week. Um, here you go. Da -da -da. Da -da. Yeah, so for this week, we have, um, on Mondays, we have ones for ABAP. On Tuesdays, we have user interface. On um, Wednesdays, we have data analytics. And Thursday, low code, no code. And then Fridays, as you guys know, cloud native development. So for this week, um, we have one for exorcism demo with Lars, as you can see. And then we have a few more today, later on today, with dealing with extensibility on business events with RAP and dealing with legacy code and transactional code on RAP. So you can be able to tune into those today. Um, but Lars, um, care to let us know what exorcism is and how it came about when on yeah. ABAP came about on yeah. there. What is ABAP? What is exorcism? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. um, so there, there's fun stuff happening all, the, all month in um, YouTube and other places, check the blog post. Somebody do a link down here in, in the chat, right? Um, and I think last year I was so lucky to get a um, t-shirt. Right. And there's also a contest ongoing, right? Read more about that on the homepage, right? So let's talk about exorcism first. So, um, so let's see, screen share. So Exorcism is a online learning platform that is open source, built uh, for nonprofit from people all over the world. So I did some stuff on Exorcism and there's also a lot of other people that have done, done stuff on Exorcism. And basically it's a platform for trying out different programming languages, getting, um, getting better at uh, trying to solve exercises um, in a lot of different programming languages. So um, it is free to join. So you can join, sign up via email or um, join via your GitHub username. And then once you're in, you can click the tracks and you'll see that there is currently 61 different tracks and each track corresponds to a different program language. So of course you can scroll down the list and find your um, favorite programming language. And of course, my favorite program language is, uh, is ABAP. Um, next in line of favorite programming languages is TypeScript. I've not done very many of the TypeScript exercises so far. I've just been trying to keep up with ABAP, right? So um, ABAP is a new track, well, somewhat new here on Exorcism. It was launched on uh, April 1st, so around seven months ago. And you can also find the uh, YouTube video uh, with me and 
Mark and Mai and and um, and Mike and DJ just uh, talking about what is Exism. Uh, and you will also find a link in the chat below or next to um, uh, perhaps in the recording. I don't know. So um, ABAP is a programming language. And actually, yeah, we did add a nice uh, about page here. So ABAP is a high level programming language created by SAP. Um, it is a uh, quite old programming language dating back to the uh, 1980s, but still in a very much active use for um, uh, developing uh, critical business applications by a lot of large enterprises, right? And if we scroll down to the bottom here, we can see the key features of, uh, of ABAP, right? So um, ABAP is evolving, so it's a quite old uh, program language, but still SAP is adding uh, new features. So um, this week or last week or next week, you'll probably hear something about uh, RAP. That is the new way to do stuff in, uh, in ABAP. And um, ABAP is fun. There's always a new or an old feature to discover. Um, I also put in that ABAP is easy, right? Because it, um, you can actually read the statements uh, as, they, as they come in uh, the program. And it is a lot more productive than any other program length, right? Wink, wink. Um, or, and one of the big features is the static typing directly linked to database schemas. So in ABAP, we actually create a database table and actually have direct access to the, um, uh, to the typing of the columns in that database table, which is pretty unique. Anyhow, so what does this look like? So um, you know, we can try to take a look at a few exercises here. So um, once you log in, probably the first exercise that you will um, uh, then you'll find is the uh, Hello World exercise, right? And we can just uh, open this in the editor. And let me just reset this to the beginning, right? Yay. So what do we actually have here in the screen right now on the, uh, on the right side is an ABAP class with some uh, ABAP code in it. And on the uh, right side, right side, there is a unit test. So um, ABAP uh, is, is and should be mainly uh, object oriented. By, by now in uh, 2022. And of course, anyone will be writing unit tests for their code, right? So our job as a student here in exercise number one is to actually get the unit test passing. So click the run test. What will happen is that it now takes the other code, runs it, runs the other code, wow. And uh, saying, that, oh, this is actually wrong. We expect to get the hello world instead of goodbye Mars. So let me just try to fix this and uh, click rerun. And we'll see, hey, the exercise is solved. Uh, and we can optionally submit this and then, uh, then take on the next exercise. Of course, the exercises will uh, vary in uh, difficulty and, um, and complexity. Um, but there should be um, um, stuff for, uh, for everybody, right? Um, and if there's not, you can contribute more on that later, right? So I was thinking that uh, perhaps we'll take a look at, um, at exactly how does ABAP code run here on Exorcism. And we'll take a few examples from the um, uh, ITAP exercises here. These are new exercises with uh, nice, uh, nice new icons contributed by the uh, SAP developer advocates. And during um, last month, we had the uh, September uh, code challenge featuring uh, these um, four exercises. And you've been able to get nice badges on um, uh, the SAP site website and everything, right? 
Cool. So uh, these four exercises is all around internal tables. So in ABAP, uh, an array is not called an array. In ABAP, we call an array for an internal table. So hence uh, the internal table thing here, right? Cool. I have handpicked a few uh, exercises or uh, solutions to exercises because when you have completed the exercise as part of your learning journey, you can actually take a look here and dive into the different community exercises. So exercises that has been uh, contributed by the community that successfully passes the unit test, right? So um, there is one um, um, solution here in the middle by Tom. And as you probably see, there is one, uh, one solution published here by Uncle two hours ago, um, another one three hours ago, another one three hours ago. So actually this, we have people using this, this platform uh, for trying out uh, to run our code uh, 24 seven, right? And in the ABAP track, we are getting very close to getting uh, 5,000 students since um, the launch of the uh, track um, like seven months ago, right? Anyhow, so in ABAP, everything is a bit special, right? And just taking and running some ABAP code um, and providing that to uh, 5,000 students is actually not an easy task. It should be a very easy task, right? Because if you have a programming language, you have a compiler, you have a runtime, install those locally, run the code, right? But in ABAP, the ABAP code typically lives inside large enterprise systems with 200 plus million lines of ABAP code and 100,000 different database tables. Uh, petabytes of uh, of data in memory in the database, right? And of course, when running these exercises, we cannot just create a new Docker instance running an SAP system, uh, start that SAP system, and then run the code. That would take far too long because some of the minimal systems are like 16 gigabytes plus, and just downloading a Docker container with that size would take more than 10 seconds. So, um, so how does this actually work? So um, I have taken some of these solutions and uh, put into my favorite editor. So um, my favorite editor here for, um, for editing Hubbard code is um, Visual Studio Code. Yeah, Visual Studio Code. And I've installed a small extension called the ABAP Lint that makes it possible to uh, syntax check uh, ABAP code on the fly, standalone in, um, in Visual Studio Code. So what we see here is a standalone system. I have no SAP system running on this PC. Uh, I have just have the, uh, the files on my hard drive. Um, um, here as simple files, and I can open these uh, in the editor, right? So let's see. So I have um, six different exercise solutions here, and I have a bit of a special setup here. And so instead of using the web interface, I can do a command down here, npm test that then takes all of this other code from these exercises. Let's start with this one as an example, which is a pretty nice solution, right? So this is the ITAP combination that uses a um, value constructor and a for expression and a for expression, a let expression and a corresponding expression to build the um, um, correct data that passes the, um, the unit tests. Anyhow, so one, how does one actually come about to um, actually run ABAP code here in the system? So this started many years ago, many years ago, with actually trying to um, um, make static analysis know a bit more about the ABAP language, right? Uh, 
So what you'll actually see here is that uh, if we're lucky, yeah, then uh, then standalone here the uh, the hovers work, and so this is actually a type. If we are very lucky, we do go to definition. Yes, ah, that worked. <laughs> this is all running standalone. So actually, using this extension, it actually knows quite a lot about the other language itself, right? So what if it was possible to take this ABAP code, translate it into another language, and then run that language, right? And that other language is typically assembly code, right? If looking in a, at a um, uh, at program languages. So the assembly language of to the, today's modern world is of course uh, JavaScript, right? So everything can run JavaScript. Every, everyone knows a bit of JavaScript. So um, the plan that started around, around a year ago is to take the ABAP code, translate it into JavaScript, and then run the JavaScript to actually make sure that the code gives the correct result. Yeah, yeah. First step, of course, is uh, reduce scope. So ABAP is a very big language. And for those that have not seen any um, any um, language diagrams of the ABAP uh, program language, you go to syntax.abaplint.org, link in the chat. It has a lot of different uh, um, diagrams of what the language as such looks like. And this is not a correct or complete interpretation of what the ABAP language as such is. It is uh, something that kind of works. And when I say kind of works, it's typically something that will be good enough for all ABAP code. Yes, ABAP is fun and engaging, right? There's always some new stuff and some old stuff to learn. So every week, this representation does evolve. Um, just like everything else in the open source app of space, right? So yeah, reducing scope. So the um, first way of reducing scope is to say that, hey, all these fancy new stuff like the value constructor and the forward duration, let's just get rid of that. So how can we actually get rid of that? First step is to do an... Uh, Automat automated downport of the source code. So actually what happens in exorcism is that the exorcism test run will take the ABAP code, the solution, and then automatically um, downport this to 702 syntax. So on the right side of the screen, we see the 702 syntax. On the left side of the screen, we see the 740 service pack something syntax. But the thing is, it is actually a lot easier to take this uh, right side piece of code and translate it into JavaScript, whereas it would be more complex in, um, in this case. We'll probably get there sometime with the transpile and everything, but yeah. Doing this is first step. Cool. So if we have the um, downport syntax that corresponds exactly, hope, hopefully exactly, in um, in this example corresponds to the solution that has been put in by the student, we can take this piece of ABAP code, translate it into some JavaScript code that then can be executed in the browser or in Node runtime. So let me just try to dig up for this um, the corresponding piece of our code. So here we have the method that is called perform combination. Here we have uh, the uh, JavaScript code with the method called perform combination, and Hopefully some of the statements here in the JavaScript code should correspond a bit to the stuff on the, uh, of the, uh, on the left side in the real ABAP code. 
Of course, again, I said that in this case, we do consider the JavaScript as assembly. So nobody, no one should actually read, need to ever read or see this, uh, this piece of JavaScript code. Just know that it's there, right? So by the dark magic of the universe, we're taking a uh, uh, 740 uh, solution, translate that into 702 syntax, taking the 702 syntax and uh, translate it into JavaScript and then taking this JavaScript and running in a dark container that then reports the um, results of running the uh, unit tests to access. Yeah, and we will be taking, uh, hopefully have time to uh, take questions in the chat um, later today, if there's any questions, so feel free. But yeah, anyhow, so that's how uh, Exorcism actually runs the, um, uh, the upper code. And do note, everything here is open source. So uh, it does not work perfectly. Um, I hope that people will uh, submit bugs if they find bugs. So we had um, Mr. Thomas Messenger that was, has been so kind to um, um, submit a few bugs to the um, uh, repository on GitHub. Um, and of course, also, there's a lot of things that can go wrong here. And ABA is a complete uh, messed up or interesting language. So there will be bugs, but hopefully we should also see that these bugs uh, will be fixed um, over time. But over time, there's also new uh, language features added by SAP. So it will be uh, a never ending story, right? Cool. So yeah, any, any good questions regarding the uh, transpiler and everything? And there is also a, um, if you go to transpiler.avablint.org, you actually have a, um, a, um, a runtime here running in, um, in the browser. So on the, uh, on the left side here, I have an editor. So how to get this, look, what? The, trans, the translation will happen automatically as we write. The JavaScript will go in the middle and the output will be in the uh, rightmost side. So, yeah, this is as easy as it, it will ever get getting started, getting into the world of other, right? So, um, talking a bit about limitations, yeah. So, um, we have um, created a, um, a meta issue here on, um, um, on the exit system GitHub. So currently the issues that we have that are known and not really being fixed, there's probably more, right? So using add in loops, so for loops with uh, identical declared variable names. So scoping in ABAP uh, with these new constructs is kind of interesting and a challenge compared to the scoping of variables in JavaScript. And these kind of have to match up for the runtime to give a correct result. Selecting from internal table. So um, when running the other code in Exorcism, there is no database attached uh, to, the, um, to the runtime. Mm -hmm. However, the runtime as such does support um, connecting a, um, a database. So uh, right now we're using a SQLite as a, a, a database ta um, engine. So in a different uh, uh, ABAP project, uh, ABAP kits, we're running unit tests, more than, more than 400 different unit tests that actually does read and write to database. Um, so it is possible to use uh, database references, inserts into databases, uh, do inner joins. And as of last week, it's possible to create uh, database views, not CDS views, the classic old style database views in uh, SE11. Now, hi, Dennis. 
So what were the things you can't do in JavaScript like C calls? Um, so multiple answers to that, right? So um, as part of the X system here, it uses a runtime that is JavaScript, right? But a lot of ABAP things also lives as ABAP code inside the stack. And as part of this, we, the community is working on uh, and this thing called Open ABAP. So stuff like uh, doing um, RTTI actually works. So I guess that the um, ABAP implementation of RTTI would have C calls and stuff, but in, Let's see, let me find some nice code here. Yeah. But in this uh, implementation of the runtime library, it has a different approach. And of course, our approach as ABAP developers will be to mainly write ABAP code. But there's also some, uh, some magic that has been invented for this purpose, right? So you'll see some very strange things going on here. So this is actually embedded JavaScript code inside the ABAP code. So kind of doing C calls by actually doing um, JavaScript code directly in runtime, and then also taking all the C code C calls and diverting back to the ABAP runtime. So one thing that you'll see that the X system actually uh, uses is the uh, unit test. That here, actually the unit test runner that runs the ABAP unit test in Exorcism has of course also been implemented in ABAP. And you can see here some ABAP code, mainly ABAP code as a bit of JavaScript code, doing some magic on actually running the unit tests in ABAP. Long live ABAP, Dennis. Um, does it connect, is it PPTP? Um, it depends on what you mean with connecting, right? Because um, in as part of uh, at least open up up here, I don't think you can do this in X system. There's an uh, HTTP client built-in. So just like we normally use the uh, the HTTP client in ABAP to call different cloud services. We can also do that in ABAP here. I think you cannot, you cannot, um, for those that want to try, you cannot um, make a Bitcoin miner and run an X system. X system has a timeout of 10 seconds. And also X system uh, when running on the Docker instance is locked uh, down. So it cannot uh, contact the internet. But try and see what happens, right? <laughs> Cool. Yeah, back to some solutions then. So um, this is the uh, perform combination. Just do another zoom here. So um, this is actually a pretty nice solution that has been published by um, one member of the community. I'm not added any names here. Um, I think this is using all the new, uh, the new what I call fancy stuff, right? But still, it could be a bit more fancy, right? Instead of actually um, using multiple string templates, I think it would be possible if this uh, was just one string template. Yeah. And that's that's say um, possible um, improvement here. Another solution to the perform combination is, um, is this solution. So uh, remember that uh, in, the, uh, in the test class, oops, 
And that's fine. Okay. In the test class, the uh, most advanced combination is uh, multiple of three. So um, this person has implemented uh, a correct implementation that actually uh, implements um, up to three different combinations. Of course, it doesn't work if there's four combinations. Right? So when doing test-driven development, as, um, as we try to encourage on, um, on exorcism, so all the uh, test cases usually start out with a very simple input and then increases in complexity like this one and this one. Right? And if doing a test driven development, of course, you need to have the, the most uh, simple solution, right? So the most simple solution to, um, um, to solving the, the first test case, I think would just be uh, doing the uh, return. Of course, that does not solve all the other, uh, the two other units as well. However, I think I actually, I like this, well, I don't like it, but anyhow, this is a solution, but it actually is much more difficult to, to make and has a higher complexity than the other solution. So I said, this is still a solution, right? But more difficult to actually implement than implementing a correct solution that would take any number of combinations, right? For the nesting exercise, right? So let's take a look at some more ABAP code. So this is uh, this is basically looping, and again, these are internal tables. Uh, that is an internal table with a structure, and this is doing loops. So this is actually somewhat. One of my favorite solutions uh, to this uh, this nesting exercise, and of course, when you've solved the, uh, the issue um, or the exercise on, on exorcism, take a look at the different uh, approaches that have been um, and ways of solving this. So I like this solution, right, because it's it's very compact and also does not use a uh, any new stuff are uh, said in uh, other words, it uses only the some very classic style of our coding, right? Simple loop, simple loop, simple append, simple loop, simple append. Very symmetric and not a lot of fancy things happen, right? Perhaps you'd say, ah, there's a lot of different ways to solve this. And this is kind of the other more uh, modern, I don't know. Uh, let's see if the, uh, if the chat thinks this is, well, looking from a language syntax perspective, this is more modern, right? This uses more of the uh, inline for loops uh, and, uh, and inline value constructors. But actually all of this is one simple, uh, uh, one single ABAP statement. Whereas over here, you have one, two, three, uh, six, not counting the end loops. Yeah, I don't know. Is it possible to debug uh, something like this in, uh, if you like to do a breakpoint in Eclipse, is that possible nowadays? I guess so. Yeah, cool. Another solution here is uh, of the aggregation part. Um, and I think it's important to note that, again, ABAP has a lot of language, but also ABAP has a lot of, um, of built-in uh, methods or built-in functions or whatever we call it. So here using the number min and number max for determining what is the minimum value and what is the maximum value of the, uh, of the input data set is a very good uh, way to go. Whereas 
something like this. So this is also another solution. I need perhaps I need to zoom out. But anyhow, um, this solution does the um, a comparison with an if. Again, this is not wrong. The, correct, the solution is correct, right? And I'm not saying this is a bad solution. This is this is actually an okay solution. Um, but as as under the under the assumption that this method does not really grow to a to a much larger extent, so this is how many lines is this? No, it doesn't say. This is more than 30 lines of code, and my opinion should not really grow um, to any much larger extent, right? But yeah, as Raphael says, one of the best part of exorcism, trying to check out the um, 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 the uh, solutions on the web page. And so now we've seen a bit about how um, exorcism actually runs the output code. Uh, we looked a bit into some of the solutions, and you too can, in your own time, um, look into the different solutions. Uh, and again, everything here is open source, so you can run this at home on your Raspberry Pi, if you want to. Right? But anyhow, Exorcism is a um, community site, so of course, um, anyone is uh, free to contribute. So uh, there's a nice con uh, description here of uh, contributing and the track contents as such is um, uh, open source on GitHub. There's also a lot of uh, nice features here in Nexus like doing the uh, mentoring. So uh, if a student is um, uh, caught up in, a, in solving a solution, it is possible to request mentoring. So, that also means that you, as part of the community, you can be part of this mentor team to help uh, more students uh, learn more about ABAP so we can get a lot more ABAP developers into the world, right? Um, also, some of the other tracks have this kind of cool uh, learning mode. We'd like to do that sometime in ABAP too. Um, submitting bugs is also a... Um, a good way of contributing. So uh, try to make your exercise and try to see if it actually works on this um, translation, taking Java code, making it into 702, making it into JavaScript and running JavaScript. That is sometimes it doesn't really work very well. And yeah, but it will improve uh, and we will um, gradually be fixing everything. Uh, and as you can see, we have uh, 32. Exercises, of course, we are open to uh, contributing uh, more exercises. So when you've solved uh, all the 32 exercises, it is now up to you to try to help making more and more complex exercises. And there's a lot of uh, default or pre-described exercises made by Exorcism that just needs translating into ABAP um, uh, to provide these to the community, right? Um, and, and yeah, as such, the exercise uh, does not really um, uh, tell the student exactly how to solve it, right? But some of the, the new things that Exorcism is working on is trying to actually analyze the code and then uh, giving recommendations based on that. So as Thomas um, mentioned here in the chat, it could be nice to focus on more new syntax. Yeah, I think that that would maybe sometime in the future be a recommendation, right? Um, to the students that then is automatically um, uh, suggested, right? There is also a lot of static analysis, so as right now, the developer can put in uh, all different kinds of ABAP code. Um, so the platform itself does, does not by default uh, get you into a direction of writing ABAP code in a specific way. So you have to start the mentoring process to get 
real human feedback on uh, on is this good code? Is this bad code? Uh, how is the indentation of the code? Is this uppercase, lowercase? Should we do um, uh, Hungarian notation? Yeah, I'm looking at you, uh, chat. Uh, um, but yeah, someday perhaps um, my focus in my uh, precious time is just trying to get more of the already defined solutions running. Cool. Do we have more questions in the chat? I think we have um, around 10 minutes, then we'll stop the, um, the live session. And yeah, for all this, again, exercises uh, is on GitHub, free for everyone to explore. Um, and yeah, running these unit tests, perhaps we can just, um, nah, yeah. So, so actually, so when we run unit tests in other open source projects, right, and we run it with the transpiler, then the next leap, lots of uh, uh, nice magic can start to happen, right? So, so something like uh, if you go to coverage.abapkit.org, then we'll actually run the unit tests, some of the unit tests in abapkit, much like the way that it's run in, um, in Exorcism. And then actually directly Nice one. Get feedback here and automatically update coverage results onto a public homepage every time a change is merged to our Git RAM. So this opens a whole new world of automation, real continuous integration with coverage um, results automatically being updated on GitHub. Nice. Yeah, I don't think we have any more questions right now. But yeah, feel free. I'm on Twitter. Um, I'm on GitHub. Uh, we have a nice uh, ABAP Git uh, Slack channel. So if you go to the ABAP Git, so this is the ABAP Git, ABAP Git project, and click the Slack button down here. You can join the Slack channel, uh, hang out, talk about Exorcism, talk about uh, ABAP code, talk about uh, ABAP Git. We are very nerdy. Yeah. Cool. Anything else? Thank you, everyone. If we don't have any more questions, we'll let Lars go. Don't forget to also check out the other sessions that we'll be having this week um, for week two. Let me go. So we have uh, plenty of sessions that we'll be running for this week. So don't forget to check them out. As you see, we have on Monday and Tuesday. All of them are color coded, so you could be able to check them out. Um, thank you so much, Lars, for taking the time to share with us what exorcism is, how to do it, and how it's run. Um, it's really, really insightful session. Hope everyone got something out of it, like I did. Thank you, Lars. Yeah, a bit of new stuff, a bit of old stuff, and then we'll see how it goes, right? Yep. Okay, thank you guys. Um, and we'll see you guys on the next session.